my name is Dawn Matthews. Welcome to this series on hardware. So far, we have learned about two types of output devices, the monitor and the printer. We have also learned that the purpose of an output device is to show or display the results of the processed information. In today's lesson, we will explore how common output devices such as the printer, screen and speakers work. We'll also see how they are used in everyday life. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to list common output devices, state what common output devices are used for, and describe how printers and monitors have improved over time. Did you know that when printers were first introduced, they could not print pictures or graphics, they could only print text? Wow, Dawn, no pictures or graphics. That's right, but not for long. As technology improved, printers were developed that would not only print pictures, but could produce screen quality prints in black and white and in color. Today, printers can make photo quality prints in any size you like. How do they work? Well, a printer accepts information from a PC and transforms that information into a printed document. But there are many different types of printers, so do they all work the same way? No, different types of printers work differently. Let's look at the three major types of printer technologies. Dot matrix, inkjet, and laser. All of these printers have a few things in common. They must be connected to a computer to be able to work. They must be able to pull paper in and push paper out. They must be able to accept information from the computer and print the information on paper. And they must have some way of securing the ink on the paper. Every printer we will discuss today does these four basic tasks. But different types of printers do these tasks in different ways. Let's start with the oldest kind of printer, the dot matrix printer. Early printers were line or impact printers. They used keys which hit into an inky ribbon like this one and left behind a mark on the paper. A typewriter is an early example of an impact printer. As they developed, impact printers got more sophisticated with daisy wheels, golf balls and pins doing the same job as the striking keys. Because an impact printer has to physically hit into the paper to make a mark, they are often slow and noisy. Some of them were so noisy that users watching their documents print had to wear earplugs or else they could lose their hearing. Dot matrix printers became available for people or businesses to buy around 1971. They're basically impact printers which have rows of tiny metal pins. These pins strike into a ribbon to form the printed characters on a piece of paper, like an automatic typewriter. You can always tell a dot matrix printer by the sound it makes. Listen. That is the sound of the tiny pins hitting the paper. They're called dot matrix printers because they use lots of tiny dots to create a document. Dot matrix printers are more suited to printing text than graphics. Dot matrix printers were the first printers available for use in the home. They were generally noisy and extremely slow, but they were small and cheap. Now, ordinary people at home could print out professional looking documents using their home computer and a dot matrix printer. The future was looking good. Today, we're not so impressed by dot matrix technology. It is the oldest kind of printing technology and it is only used for specific jobs where lists of information need to be printed or where information needs to be printed on multi-part paper. This is what multi-part paper looks like. Because dot matrix printers have an automatic paper feeder, they can print out long lists on multi-part paper. As you can see, this paper has holes on both sides. You insert the paper like this. These holes are used to hold the paper in place so that it does not slip. 
they are also used to move the paper like this. Because the pins impact on the paper, a dot matrix printer can also make a copy of a document. This type of printing is useful for businesses that need to keep copies of documents that are normally sent to clients. You might have seen one in a pharmacy or received information from a company that is using this kind of printer. The biggest drawback with dot matrix printers is that they cannot print graphics like pictures and illustrations. For that you need a different kind of printer such as an inkjet printer or laser printer. Inkjet printers are probably the most common type of printers found today. Inkjet printers were first introduced around 1980. At the time when they first came out, the inkjet technology was new and they were very expensive to produce. Only big businesses would have a fancy inkjet printer. Today these printers are relatively cheap and they are found in homes all over the world. Inkjet printers let you produce high quality prints from your PC. But how do they work? Well, the name inkjet gives a pretty good clue. These printers put an image on paper by using tiny jets that squirt black or colored ink onto a page. The ink lands on the page in the form of tiny dots. These dots of ink are extremely small, even smaller than the diameter of a human hair. But when you look at the whole picture, all the tiny dots seem to join together to form a complete image. Let's do a quick experiment to see how this works. Let's say we want to make a letter H on this page, but we have only this spot of liquid ink and this needle. How can we do it? Well, I'm going to try and form the letter H by putting dots of ink close together onto the page like this. Look there, I've just finished the top of the corner of an H. Now let's look at an H that I did earlier. As you can see, it's far from perfect, even though I squeezed in as many dots as I could. But you can still clearly see that it is an H. Now let's watch the inkjet printer perform the same task. Believe it or not, the inkjet printer was working in a similar way to me, the ink pot and the needle. Only difference is that instead of the needle, the printer uses tiny ink jets. The ink is stored in replaceable cartridges which are found inside the printer. When you make a color print on an inkjet printer, many processes are happening inside the printer. First, the print head moves across the page line by line. As it sweeps rapidly across the paper, hundreds of nozzles in the head spray ink droplets onto the paper. These droplets form the dots that make up your full color image. Different colors are formed when different colored dots are overlaid on the same spot. So, if you look at a green spot on the page through a microscope, you will see the individual yellow and cyan ink dots that have combined to form green. It's important to remember that the more dots per inch you have, the better an image will look. So an image that is printed out at 300 dots per inch or DPI will show clearer detail than an image printed out at 72 DPI. We say that the image printed out at 300 DPI has a higher resolution than the image printed out at 72 DPI. You can see that the picture with a higher resolution looks just like an actual photograph. Did you see too that the inkjet was much quicker and quieter than the old dot matrix printer? But are there any disadvantages of an inkjet printer? The disadvantage of an inkjet printer is that replacement ink cartridges are very expensive to buy. This means that the cost per printed page is high. In fact, printing with an inkjet printer costs about 10 times more than printing with a laser printer. Hmm. A laser printer, that sounds pretty cool, eh? Well, let's find out more. In 1938, a dry printing process called electrophotography was invented. Laser printers work in the same manner as photocopiers and fax machines. They use a special powdered ink called toner. 
An interesting fact about laser printers is that it uses static electricity to hold the toner on the paper until the image has been fixed. Laser printers are popular because they produce high quality prints. They are fast and the cost per page is low. The drawback is that laser printers are usually quite expensive to buy. As with inkjets, you get two kinds of laser printers, black and white and color. Color laser printers are more expensive and are not so common as black and white laser printers. So you've got dot matrix printers that use pins that strike against an ink ribbon. Then you've got inkjet printers that use nozzles that squirt ink onto the paper. Then you've got laser printers that use uh, toner and static electricity. So are there any other types of printers available? Yes, there are many special purpose printers available. These printers are only used for one specific purpose. For example, you get photo printers, barcode printers and fax machines and that's printers. Now let's have a look at another important output device, the monitor. The monitor is the most used output device on a computer. It displays all the results processed by the computer on its screen. The first monitors could only display text in black and white, orange and black or green and black. They had a very low resolution and did not display images well at all. Over time, technology has changed so that monitors can display many different colors at a high resolution on larger screens. Do you remember that on a printed page, the resolution of the image is expressed by the number of dots per inch. On a monitor, the resolution is expressed by the number of pixels. The word pixel is short for picture element. A picture element is a single point in an electronic image. The more pixels there are in an image, the better the quality of the displayed image. One of the most important developments which affects the display of images has been improvements in the graphics or video card. You will remember that this card is one of the add-on cards attached to the motherboard. This table gives you information about different video cards, the resolution that they allow and the size of screen best suited for an image with this resolution. Can you see that you should use a smaller screen in situations where the resolution is low? The standard card found in most computers today is the SVGA or Super Video Graphic Adapter. This is an analog card, as are all the cards we named in the table. However, digital cards are now also available and are increasingly being used. Not only have cards developed over time, but so have monitors themselves. Most desktop monitors use a cathode ray tube or CRT to display an image. This is the same technology used by most television sets. However, more modern monitors use an LCD or liquid crystal display screen. LCD screens are also called flat panel display screens. These screens are thinner, lighter and draw less power than cathode ray screens. They're also found in notebooks, televisions, handheld devices like PDAs, cell phones and other consumer products. So far we have discussed output devices like printers and monitors. Now can you name any other output devices? Well, I guess another output device that we use is speakers. Good Archie. Today, speakers are used everywhere. They're used in TVs, hi-fis, cars, and computers. They can play back music, words, sounds, and any other media that you can hear. Well, that's all we have time for today. Now, here's your task. Find out what kind of printers your school has. List the advantages and disadvantages of each kind of printer that you find. Suggest how a different kind of printer might be better suited to your school. Finally, make a list of as many other output devices as you can find in a week and say what each is used for. I hope you've enjoyed finding out about output devices. Don't forget to visit our website for more information. Join us next time when we will be examining specialized computing devices like webcams.